Drawing a cartoon of yourself is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. Today is International Children's Books Day and I thought we could celebrate with a giveaway. So make sure to stay tuned to learn how you can enter to win free brushes and even a custom illustration. Now with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. Before we can actually start sketching, we have a few things that we need to organize in the file because this project is a little bit more intense, as you can see, than just a regular illustration. We have a picture in the background and we're going to use a few different references. So first thing first, we're going to need to create a canvas. Now for our friends, these are the dimensions of the canvas I will be using in this video. I'm going with a square so that I could post this image on Instagram, but you can really use any dimensions of your choice. One thing I would recommend though is to go with a little bit bigger than you would think. And the reason for that is the actual part that we're going to be drawing is pretty small within the whole picture. So you need to make sure you're going to have room to zoom in so for that your entire image needs to be a little bit bigger than you might think. If you want to have my illustration as a reference, you can do that by going in the wrench icon menu, in the canvas menu, and activating the reference toggle which is going to let you import a picture. So you can download my illustration along with the color palette I personally will be using. They both be linked in the description below. But this video is kind of a cartoon yourself, so I'm going to give you tips on creating your own color palette as well as using your own picture if you want. Speaking of pictures, we're going to need to import two photos before we start. One is going to be a background setting and the other one is going to be a photo of you or whoever you want to draw as the cartoon character. And for the background picture, you can really pick whatever you want. So you could take a picture yourself, you could even take it straight from your iPad. If you go in the wrench icon menu, in the add submenu, you have the option to take a photo. So you could just bring up your iPad, take a picture of whatever setting you want. I will link a bunch of different options in the description below if you don't want to take your own picture of yeah, copyright free images, including the one I will be using. It is from Unsplash, I think. Now the way to import your picture is going to depend on which method you use to bring it onto your iPad. So if it's a picture you downloaded from the internet straight onto your iPad, you're going to go in the wrench icon menu and the add sub menu, you're going to click insert a file because your photo is in your downloads folder. If it's a picture that you took with your iPad or that you shared from a phone or something like that, it's probably going to be in your camera roll. In that case, you would select insert a photo. This is where my picture is. So I'm just going to tap insert a photo and I'm going to find it, it's right here. And then using the blue handles, just resize it as you want. Now the other picture you're going to need, like I was saying, is a picture of you that we can use for the color references as well as your hair. So you really don't need something that you like your face in it. It doesn't need to be an artistic picture in any way. We just want to use it to color pick some colors. So same thing, going in the wrench icon menu, this picture is probably going to be in your camera roll. So you're going to go into insert a photo and find the picture. And then you're just going to put it on the top so it's out of the way. And it doesn't need to be super big either. And if the picture you're using has something in the book, don't worry about it. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to erase that as well as how to include shadows and stuff to blend your character within the picture. But for now, we're going to go straight into sketching. So we're going to start with a super, super basic sketch, just mapping out the basic proportions and positioning of everything. It's going to look messy, but that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to sketch. And while we're here, we might also want to rename the other layers we have. So one could be reference picture and the other one would be background. It might also be helpful for you to lower the opacity of your background so you can still kind of see how everything is positioned, but so it's not as much in the way because that could be distracting for your sketch. So I'm going to go with something like that. I can still see where the book is, but it's definitely not as intense as it was. With that done, let's go back to our sketch layer. And here you can really go with any color of your choice for the sketch. We're not going to see this crazy looking sketch in the final result anyway. So anything you know you like for sketching is going to work well. I like to sketch with a neutral gray. 
And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting a few different type of brushes. I'm going to be suggesting brushes that you could use if you're working in a different software than Procreate. I'm also going to be suggesting Procreate brushes that come with the app, so totally free brushes. And finally, I'm going to be suggesting brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. So these brushes, they're not essential. Don't worry, you can totally follow along with some of the other suggestion or even whatever you want. But these brushes can help you save time and get more professional results because they're really super sensitive and there's a lot of really cool texture within them. So if you want to check them out, there will be a link in the description below. And there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. This time though, the promo code is extra special because using it at checkout on my website would automatically give you a chance to win a custom illustration, but I'm getting ahead of myself, more on that later. Like I was saying, we're not going to see the sketch in the final result, so you can really pick whatever brush you know you're comfortable with and that you feel like you're going to be able to sketch with really well. In Procreate, in terms of the free brushes, that could be in the sketching pack, the HP Pencil. Or if you're working with a different software, anything that has pencil and name is probably going to work really well for that. Otherwise, if you're working with the illustration bundle, you're going to pick the sketching brush. We're going to start by just sketching the head and the body with two circles that are roughly the same size. For the legs, we're just going to use super basic ovals. So like this for the top of the leg. And like that for the bottom. And you can also add tiny ovals for the feet. Now before we draw the arms, it might be helpful to draw roughly where the pencil is going to be so we know where to put the arms, of course. So in my example, I went with the pencil kind of resting on the shoulder because it's really, really, really massive. So I'm just going to go with that again. For now, just going with a rectangle. And with that, we can add the arms pretty easily. I like to start by adding kind of roughly the shoulder socket, so just two ovals onto the body. And then just like we did for the legs, drawing the arms in two different sections. So one oval for the top and then one oval for the bottom. And for the hands, for now, we're just going to draw a thumb and then a rectangle for the other fingers. And if you're not used to drawing characters from scratch like this, this is probably quite tricky and that's totally okay. Bear with me, I'm going to show you how to make it look good. I'm going to show you how to make adjustments. So for now, just focus on trying to draw the shapes and it's really okay. Don't worry, we're going to do this together. So at this stage we have a pretty good skeleton, so we can zoom in onto the face and starting adding some facial features. And one thing that is super helpful for the head is drawing what I call the plus sign, just a slightly curved vertical line and a slightly curved horizontal line to map out the angle of the head. Once you have that, you can go ahead and draw the nose, so whatever shape you want for the nose, I like to go with just a curve like this. But you could go with a pointy nose, or what I call the animal crossing nose, just a triangle. So you can really experiment with a bunch of different shapes. I like to go with just a C curve like that. And then you can draw your eyes as big or as small as you want. I'm going to go with pretty big eyes. If you want, you can also refine the shape of the head. So instead of having a curve like this, or like an oval, you could have more of a bean shape like that. You could also add an oval for the ear. It's probably going to be hidden by the pencil, but might as well sketch it. You can also sketch a little mouth and some very chill eyebrows. Now for the hair, this is where you can really use your reference picture to help you figure out, you know, what hairstyle you want to go with. But one tip that I would give you is that no matter which hairstyle you're going for, don't really focus on the different hair strands. Just focus on the general shape of the hair and what is the most defining characteristic, if I can say, of the hair. For mine, it's that it's very long. It's also kind of curly, but it's mostly that it's long. So just keep that in mind and then go over your character and roughly map out the hair. Again, just thinking about the general movement, the general form of it, not the hair strands themselves. And I do have a few videos where I teach specific kind of hair drawings, like short hair, curly hair. If you want more of a step-by-step -step hair drawing video to complement this one. I will link those in the description below so you can check them out. A few general tips though. I personally like to start by drawing the hairline as well as the part, then moving on to the hair directly on top of the head, and finally the hair that is kind of floating everywhere. There really doesn't need to be any fancier than that. And at this stage, we're almost ready to start tracing to clean up our crazy looking sketch. 
But I want to show you the reason why we actually break it down in basic shapes like this instead of trying to go straight for something clean. Whenever you draw with basic shapes, it's super easy to move them around and change either the position or the proportions even of your character. So let's say for example, um, what would I want to move? Let's say I don't like the fact the head is looking this way. All I would have to do, since it's just a circle essentially, is I can use my selection tool, setting it to freehand, and then drawing around that basic shape. I could then go in with my arrow tool. I can then very quickly just change different parts of my character. So feel free to pause the video here to take all the time you need to play with the different shapes of your character. And once you're done with that, we're going to just finalize the sketch, so adding some little pencils everywhere, and then we're going to move on to the line art. So when you're happy with your character structure, you can go ahead and just finish up the pencils. So just adding a triangle at the end, and playing with the length, deciding what you want to go with. Then adding any other elements to really make it so your character feels like it's in the picture. So I'm going to add two pencils because otherwise I feel like this page is too empty, but you could really adapt to whatever picture you're using. Great, so that was probably the hardest part of the entire video. Now that we have the rough sketch, all we need to do is go back over to different lines and trace it so that we have a clean line art. So for that, we're going to create a new layer above the sketch and we're going to rename it to line art. For now, we're going to draw all the line art in one color, but later in the video, I'm going to show you how to recall it very quickly. If you want, you could keep it as just one color. So just go with something dark for now. I'm going to go with a darker version of the skin, which in the color palette is going to be this right here. But honestly, just pick whatever, it, it really doesn't matter. And in terms of the brush, you could stick with the brush you use for the sketch if it's a brush you like. But if you're working in Procreate, I recommend switching from the HP pencil to the 6B pencil. So that's if you're using the free brushes. Or if you're using the illustration bundle going to the outlines brush, they're just a little bit thicker and they're going to behave better for outlines. One more thing we might want to do is totally hide the background for this so we're not distracted at all. And maybe lowering the opacity of your sketch a little bit as well if you feel like it's too intense so that we can really see the line art super well. And honestly here, like I was saying, all you have to do is go over your crazy lines and just trace the ones you actually want to use. Now the size of the brush you use here is really going to depend on one, the brush you selected, two, the size of the canvas, as well as three, just your general preferences. So there's not one brush size to use here, just do a few tests and see what you like, and then go with that. Now I'm going to stop talking here in a few seconds to let you focus on drawing your line art, but I do have one tip for you before you start. When you're creating outlines or line art in digital art, it is really super helpful to try and not erase. So what I mean by that, I'm going to show you an example. If you draw a line, especially a curve, and you realize you're not happy with one part of the curve, for example, this here, instead of erasing and then trying to match the curve and go from there, just undo and then redo the whole thing until you're happy with the whole curve. I know it might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but there are a few reasons for that. One of them is, well, it's just going to look much better. Your curves are going to flow better and the overall piece is just going to be so much more connected. And number two is that although it does take more time the first few sessions to not erase and redraw your line, when you get used to it, it's going to save you a lot of time and it's going to be much quicker. So it's just a good thing to do in general in terms of your workflow. So feel free to pause the video here if you want to focus on drawing your outlines, otherwise we're going to go through a sped up version of me drawing my line art and I'm going to give you specific tips on drawing specific parts like the hands and the hair. So as you can see for this character, the hands can be very simple. For the one that is wrapped on top of the pencil, you're just drawing a few ovals. So one oval for the thumb that is kind of sticking out and then three more ovals are wrapping around. Super simple. The other hand is going to be pretty much the same thing, so just zooming in, maybe starting with the thumb. And I'm not gonna lie here, in this illustration the hands are so tiny, I don't believe it's worth spending a whole lot of time on them. But if you do want to learn how to properly draw cartoon hands, I have a video in the description below. You can check it out, it's all about drawing hands. I know right now the legs look absolutely crazy, but essentially to draw your line art, all you have to do is go on the outside of the different ovals. And then maybe adding a tiny diagonal line to create this kind of Y-shape to loosely show the pelvis. 
For the hair, once more, don't focus on the specific little strands, focus on the general movement. I know my hair is wavy, so I'm just going to draw a bunch of S and C curves on the ends and pretty much call it a day. For the facial features, you can really do whatever you want, but one tip I have for the eyes is to not fully connect the outlines, kind of leaving the middle slash bottom part open, and also for now, not drawing the iris, so just kind of a blank eye. And I know I said you're better to not erase, but for the pencil, since we want straight lines, when you have two that are overlapping, you're much better drawing all the lines and then going back and erasing them, because otherwise it's going to be very hard to have the different parts matching. And if you want to check that your liner looks great, one thing you might want to do is, well, obviously hide the sketch just so you can see if you trace everything, but you can also go ahead and with the error tool, flip your liner. And that's going to give you a fresh look on your liner. Now, this is the time to make any last minute change before we start adding the colors. When we start adding the color, it's going to be much harder to move stuff around. So flip your illustration and then just like we did when we have the rough sketch, you can use your selection tool to move stuff around. For example, I find this face to be really weird. <laughs> the eyes are too high. Well, everything is too high. So I'm just going to draw a freehand selection and then move my facial features around until I'm happy with them. And really here, take all the time you need to make sure your line art is exactly how you want it to be and then flip it back so we can start adding the colors. Awesome. So at this stage, we're essentially working with a coloring book, so it should be pretty easy from now on. So if you made it this far, the hardest part is behind us. You can for sure finish this illustration. We're simply going to start by painting the different colors on separate layers. So we're going to create a new layer, put it below our line art and rename it to skin. Now in terms of brushes here, we're going to go with something that has no texture to it whatsoever. So that could be, if you're working with a different software than Procreate, just a general hard round brush. In Procreate, in terms of free brushes, you could go in the airbrushing panel and picking the hard brush. If you're working with the illustration bundle, the brush you would use here is the base round brush. So essentially just picking the most basic brush you can, and then we're going to just outline the different sections and fill them in to create silhouettes of the different portions of the character. Now to pick your skin tone, one thing you could do here is just go over your picture and color pick the skin. That is great, but you might notice that depending on where you color pick the skin, it changes a lot. So one way you can go around that is with your reference picture layer selected, going in the adjustment panel, selecting Gaussian blur, and then blurring your picture, which is going to just mix all the colors together. So now if we go back on our skin layer, if we color pick the skin, there's going to be way less variation, so you can just pretty much color pick wherever their skin. Now, just so I'm coherent with the color palette I'm providing, I'm going to pick the skin that I included there, which is this one right here at the top. Then you're just going to outline the different skin section and fill them in to create full shapes. So we're just going to repeat these same steps for all the different colors and we're going to paint each different color on a separate layer and I'm going to show you why in just a second. So let's go with a shirt because that would be a good example. So just creating a new layer below the line art and renaming it to shirt. So you could totally go with the color of the shirt that you have in your picture. In my case, we don't see it because it's just my hair and my rabbit in front of it. So if that's the case for you, or if you just want to go with a different color for your clothes and the different pencils, a few tips that you could use in order to create a color palette that is coherent with your background is to, well, reactivate your background, increasing the opacity, and then color picking one of the color from the background. So let's say I go with kind of this page here. And with that selected, going in the color menu, in the harmony submenu here, you're going to have a few ways of finding a color that would work well with that color that you picked in your background, which means your character automatically is going to blend well with the background if you do that. And to see different options, you just go below color here and tap on the word. So for example, here we have complementary, but you could go with tetradic or something like that. So any of the colors that are suggested here would work well with the color you color picked. Now let's say I'm going with this blue here. Once you have that color selected, you can go back in the classic submenu and then not changing the hue, so not changing what we usually call the color. You could still change the saturation, so adding more gray or less gray, as well as the brightness, so more white or more black. 
and that color is still going to work well. So essentially you can make your color lighter or darker and it's still going to work well in terms of color palette. Now what's more, just so I'm coherent with the color palette I'm providing for the shirt, I'm going to go with this kind of teal right here. And again, same thing, we're just going to paint the outline and then fill it in. And once you have that done, I'm going to show you how you can then tweak the color if you're not happy with it. So let's say you've painted your shirt or your pants or anything really, and you're not happy with the color. Since it's on a separate layer, we can easily go in the adjustment panel and selecting hue, saturation and brightness. We're going to be able to change the color just using these sliders here. So you could change the hue, the saturation, and the brightness until you find something that you like. So that's a really good way of building in color palette because that means you don't have to know what you're going for. You can just roughly paint something and then experiment and go with your gut feeling as opposed to like head knowledge or something like that. So while you're working on drawing all your different colors on separate layers, let's talk about the giveaway. So this giveaway is going to be in two parts. And the first part is very similar to what I usually do on the channel. So to enter, you simply find the secret password hidden in this video and then comment it on both YouTube and Instagram. I will select two entries randomly and the winners will each get one copy of the Ultimate Illustration Bundle. The second part of the giveaway is a bit different because I'm trying something new here. Hopefully you will like it. The prize for this part of the giveaway is a custom illustration made by me of you as a cartoon sitting on a book like this. To enter, use the special promo code KIDLIT30 at checkout on my website and add the secret password hidden later in this video as a note in the order. So not only will you get 30% of your purchase of any brushes, but you will also automatically be entered to win the custom illustration. So that's it for the giveaway, but I also teamed up with a business started by Vicky Weber, a fantastic author I had the chance to work with in the last few years to get you special promo codes for her comprehensive self-publishing courses. Now you can find more information on athomeauthor.com, but let's just say some of Vicky's books became Amazon number one bestsellers in their category, so she's pretty much the one person you want to learn from if you're thinking about self-publishing. I know that was a lot of information all at once, so I will add the giveaway rules, dates and details, as well as the special promo codes in the video description if you want to check them out. But for now, let's move on to the next step, color variation and details. Great, so with the basic colors mapped out, it's going to be very easy to go ahead and add some color variation and stuff like, you know, the eyes. So we're going to start with the eyes because it's going to make a big difference. Just zoom in and on top of whichever layer you created the white part of the eyes, go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to iris. If you're working in a software that has clipping mask, go ahead and activate the clipping mask onto the iris to the eyes. So in Procreate, you just tap on a layer and select clipping mask. Now, if you don't have clipping mask, don't worry. Essentially, all it does is that now everything we draw on this iris layer is going to stay within the eye shape. It just helps us save time because we don't have to worry about staying within the shape. But otherwise, you could just be a bit more careful and stay within the eye shape. And for the iris, you're going to pick whichever eye color you want to have. I'm going to go with this nice green here. And then you can just draw the irises. And one thing that is great about drawing the iris on a separate layer is that you always have the option to go back with your trusty selection tool, just select one of the iris, and then just move it around until you're happy with the direction the character is looking in. Great, so the first color variation we're going to add is actually within the irises themselves. And for that, we're going to activate alpha lock on the iris layer. So you can do that by using two fingers and then swiping your layer towards the right, or you can also manually activate it from the menu, it's right here. If you're working in a software that doesn't have alpha lock, don't worry about it. Essentially what alpha lock does is similar to a clipping mask, but on the layer itself. So now whatever we draw on the iris layer is not only going to stay within the eye shape because of the clipping mask, but it's also going to stay within the iris shape itself because of the alpha lock. So here, for example, you could go with a darker version of your eye color. I'm going to go with a darker version of my green. And selecting a brush that has a bit more grit to it so it matches the outline. So either something that has charcoal in the name if you're working with a different software or if you're working in Procreate but using the free brushes, the charcoal pack, the willow charcoal would work really well. Or if you have the illustration bundle, just picking the basic texture brush. But with those brushes, essentially you can go back and yeah, just add a bit of color variation by just gently brushing over one part of the iris. Now we can use this technique to add color variation really anywhere. I like to use it to add color variation on the skin as well as on the hair. So we're going to do that real quick. 
for the skin, again, you would just activate alpha lock if that's available to you. So swiping the skin layer with two fingers towards the right. Otherwise, you just make sure that you stay within the lines. That's pretty much it. And selecting the skin layer, we're going to pick here a nice pink. So something not too saturated, but also not too desaturated, pretty much in the middle. Otherwise, pretty bright, obviously, depending on your skin color. And with the same brush, same technique, you can just brush over the cheeks, maybe a little bit on the nose as well, maybe the ears, a little bit on the elbow, as well as the tip of the fingers. So it's really not precise, but it does make the character look so much more alive. You can also use this technique for the hair, so either creating two-toned hair or adding some highlights and stuff like that. I like to just add a gradient in mine because otherwise it's really long and kind of boring. So again, just activating alpha lock on the hair layer. And then picking a different version of your hair color. I'm just going to go with a more orange version of my brown and brush that over the bottom. So feel free to pause the video here to add as much color variation as you want and we're going to move on to the next step in which we're going to recolor the outline. So recoloring the outlines is pretty easy. It's pretty much the same technique that we use to add coloration within the different color shapes. So we're going to activate alpha lock on our liner layer. And then we're just going to pick darker versions of the different colors we have and use them to recolor specific portions of the line art. And if you want to have just one color outline, that's really okay. You could skip the step. So if you want, for example, to have black outlines, you could just go ahead and color pick black and then drop it over your line art and recolor everything. That could be a look. But otherwise, like I was saying, you just color pick any color you use, make it quite a bit darker, and then brush over that section. If you're using the color palette, the darker version of the base colors are on the right of the colors. So for example, the darker version of the skin is here, darker version of the hair, darker version of the eyes. You get the idea. Otherwise, yeah, just color picking your color and making it darker is essentially all you have to do. And you really don't need to be precise when you do that, so it's probably going to take you only a minute or two, but your illustration is going to look so much more polished and professional at the end. So once more, feel free to pause the video here to take all the time you need, and then we're going to meet up in the next step, we're going to start adding the shadows. Great, so by now our piece looks pretty good, but it's quite flat. So we're going to add some very simple shadows just to make it pop a little bit more. And for that, we're going to create a new layer above all the different color layers we have, but below the line art. And we're going to rename this one to Shadows. We're also going to change the blending mode of this shadow layer to either Linear Burn or Multiply. You can try both. And we're going to lower the opacity of that layer around 50% for now, but we're going to come back and tweak it later. I'm not going to get into the details of what blending modes are because I have a full video just about that. But if you're not familiar with blending mode, just consider that now whatever we draw on the shadow layer is going to adapt with the colors behind it. So that means we can pick one color, paint all the shadows with that one color, and it's going to adapt to the different sections of a character. Now the color you use for your shadows here is going to depend on your background. Now to help you with that, go ahead and Locate a part of your picture that is white. If you're working with a book, just focus on one of the pages and see which area is in the shadow and then look at the tint the shadow has. So in my case, we can tell that the shadows are kind of brownish. So you could either color pick the color itself or just kind of eyeball it. If you're using the color palettes, this is the color we're going to use for the shadows. Now, in order for a character to work well with the environment it's in, we're going to need to figure out where the light source is. So just locate a shadow that is very well defined. In my case, I have one here, which means the light source is probably somewhere around here. If you need the shading, it might be helpful to create just a random layer. You don't need to rename it. It's kind of a scrap layer. And then draw where your light source is. In my case, it was kind of like here. And then just draw a bunch of rays starting from the light source and going onto your character. You can then go back on your shadow layer and follow the light source, follow the ray and see where it hits a body part. If I go with this one right here, it's going to hit the arm, which means the arm would cast a shadow onto the body right here. And we're mostly going to use the shadows here to help differentiate the different body parts and the different elements in the picture. So yeah, just following the rays and adding shadows between the different elements. If 
you do want to take it one step further, you can also add what is called form shadows. Although there's nothing over the head right here, for example, creating a cast shadow, the head is curving away from the light, which means at one point the light is just not going to be able to reach. So you can look at your character and see which parts are kind of curving away from the light and then adding a soft shadow in that area. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this far in the video, please leave a comment with the word book. Now, the secret password is a game we play here in all my drawing tutorials because it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. So that's super important. But this secret password is even more important because it's your key to enter the giveaway. So just leave a comment with the word book on YouTube and on Instagram to enter the brush giveaway. And don't forget it to add it as a note at checkout on my website if you buy any bundle or any brush pack to get a chance to win a custom illustration. If you want, you can also use the shadows to add a bit more texture in the hair. So just following the general shapes you have on the outline and then adding similar shapes within the hair. We're also going to do the same thing on the pencils. So if you want, you could go ahead and take your light source layer and then just move it so it's around the pencils. I personally am not a fan of this light source. I find it's a bit more confusing. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it, but you could totally use it if you want. So just focusing on the pencils, doing the same thing. So yeah, just focusing on the pencils, which should be much easier because they're not super curved, they're kind of flat edges. At least if you went with the same style of pencil as I did. So once you have your shadows, feel free to go back and play with the opacity of the layer. I find mine to be a bit too intense, so I'm just going to lower the opacity. For now, we're not going to draw any shadows on the ground. We're going to do that in the last step of the video in which we kind of blend the character with the background. So we're going to skip straight to adding the lights. We're just creating a new layer, renaming it to lights. And for lights, we're going to use the blending mode add. Now add is very, very strong. So we're going to start by lowering it probably around 30%, something like that. And like we did for the shadows, we're going to see which color light we have in the piece. I feel like in general, the picture I use for the background is very bright and kind of warm. So I'm just going to go with a nice bright yellow. If you're not sure which color to go with for your highlights, you cannot seem to find it. Just go with a bright yellow. That's the safest bet because worst case scenario is just going to look like it's the sun. So just go with that. And for the highlights, there are so many different strategies you could use. You could go with a more realistic look in highlights, you know, the volumes themselves. So to make your character look more 3D, or if you want, you could use my technique that I call outlining your outlines. It's super, super simple. And it's going to help your character pop from the background even more. And all you have to do essentially is just remembering where your light source is. And from there, you just outline all the different outlines that you have that are facing the light source with a line of light. So it's going to look a little bit like this. You could also add some extra lights on the cheeks and maybe in the eyes as well. Although I found for the eyes, it's worth creating a separate layer and using pure white because this is not bright enough. I really want super intense highlights in the eyes. But yeah, otherwise it's a super easy technique. Just looking at all the different body parts and the different elements and then outlining the outlines that are facing the light source. So once more, I'm going to stop talking to let you focus on drawing your highlights. And when you're done, we're going to meet for the next step, which is going to be the last one. We're going to change a few things so that our character blends well with the background. Okay, so let's finish up this piece. We have just a couple more steps, but they're probably the most important ones. So make sure you watch until the end. But we're going to clean up our file a little bit first. So just hiding the reference picture here at the top. Obviously, we don't need it anymore. And then grouping all the different layers we have for your characters and the pencil. So to do that, you just swipe the layers with one finger towards the right, which is going to allow you to select a bunch. And then we're going to tap group. We're going to collapse the group and rename it to illustration. But before we erase the text on the book, we're going to add the shadows that are cast by the character in the pencils. So below the illustration group, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to rename this one to ground shadows. Just like we did for the character, we're going to set the blending mode of this layer to linear burn and we're going to lower the opacity to roughly what it was for the character. It doesn't need to be exactly the same. I think mine was around 30%. And we're going to go back to the same color we used. So in my case, it was here, this kind of brownish uh, red. And we're just going to paint a shadow below a character and below the pencil in the same direction that the other shadows are in illustration. And that should really help make the character look like it's part of the photo.
It might also be nice to have some sort of scribble onto the page, so just creating a new layer, making sure it's below the shadows, and renaming it to Scribbles. And so just selecting the color of the pencil your character is holding, you can then draw whatever you want. And if you want to make sure everything is just right and your page is curving away like mine is, you might want to add a shadow within that shape. So just activate an alpha lock onto that scribble layer, picking a darker version of your color, and then just creating a gradient to make it look like your shape is following the page. Speaking of the page, the very last thing we're going to do here is just erasing the text because that doesn't look quite right. So for that, we're actually going to hide the illustration, the shadow, and the scribble, and we're going to create a new layer right above the background. We're going to rename this layer to white page. And here it's quite simple. You're just going to color pick multiple times different colors and then paint over the text. And if, like me, you had a lot of color evasion within the pages, you probably have some really weird looking blobs. So to blend them in, just use your smudge tool here at the top, setting it to in the airbrushing panel. Where is it? There. Setting it to the soft brush from the airbrushing panel, you're going to be able to just blend the different blobs together. You can then go back, reactivate your scribbles layer, your ground shadows, as well as your character or illustration, and there you go. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more ways to cartoon yourself, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more videos for you. But before you leave, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.